Hi, this is Chef Pachi and this is our first class from Panama. I am here in my kitchen and I want to tell you all about the amazing hacks so you can have a great eating experience with no trouble. You can flow with everything that has to do with food and cooking. We need to reduce fat, sugar, salt, and time because we want to flow. I'm sure you can create a great diet plan, no matter what your diet is, with most of the foods you eat and then some new ones little by little. I'm gonna send you a list that has mixes of herbs and spices that you're gonna use, or in case you have two or three of these and you say, what can I cook today? And just check out the chart and just go ahead. It's, it's a guide. It doesn't mean you have to mix all of the ingredients, but it's a guide to help you with imagination at the beginning afterwards you're gonna just do it with no problem at all so the first thing we want to attack is shopping and when we make our list we can divide our food in four like dr. Clyde says we'll divide our chart between vegetables carbs which are the energy carbs our fats and our protein and this way we can have everything organized in the kitchen when we come in so i think we could shop once a month for things that are staples so that we don't have to be buying everything every week for example i suggest buying your meats and poultry and seafood except very thin fish fillets for your month you can if you order them online you can order them by the pound and they'll probably come vacuum packed. And if you, they are come, and if they come vacuum sealed by pound, it's perfect because this is small portions that you can divide in two and three and four, dividing it for how many people you want to serve. Then the other thing that you can buy once a month are dry legumes. And you can buy two or three different ones, cook them, freeze them, keep them in the fridge, and then keep your legumes made for the month why first because they're dry and nothing's going to happen to them second because they freeze fantastically and if you have a pressure cooker you can cook them in no time if you leave them within water overnight and then you cook them the next day for 20 minutes you can have black beans garbanzos cannellini beans all sorts of different kinds of legumes that are delicious and they're going to be right there for you to add to your breakfast, lunch, dinners, even snacks. We have some amazing snacks that are made with cannellini beans, a little bit of delicious oil and herbs, and that's it. So let's keep going. Then once a week, what we buy are only the fresh foods, fruits and leaves, vegetables and bread or fresh dairy. That's it. That way we have a small list of foods. For example, my vegetables come from a farm every Thursday. So if we go and watch my fridge today, it's very low on veggies, but tomorrow I'm getting my vegetables. So since I don't know what's coming from the market, it depends on the season and what's growing best, then I'll just go and buy a couple of days later, whatever I'm missing. But I'm gonna have most of my vegetables arrive and I'm gonna eat and cook whatever's coming for me. Some of the things that I never get, for example, are like onions and shallots and maybe some herbs that I want. So those I buy and sometimes I slice them. I'm gonna show you in the freezer in a minute. I pre-cut them and I freeze them. I keep some fresh, I keep some frozen. That way I don't have to buy lots of things. But the most important part of all is to create one, that chart of the foods you like and you're willing to eat, and two, your shopping list with a menu. It doesn't have to be an exact menu, but just a menu that, no, that tells you what you're gonna have each day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in general. Maybe you're gonna have like, uh, you know, like black bean wraps in the morning for breakfast, and then you're gonna have some salmon at lunch, which will probably be next day's dinner, or salmon at dinner for next day's lunch. 
and so on. That way it'll be so simple not to ever have to worry about your food again. And if you do it for one week, then another week, after you have two or three different plans, you have them forever. Afterwards, you just check and change small amounts of things. Another thing that I want to buy if I can and freeze are my thick seafood pieces. Salmon, you know, the big cod and pieces of fish that are about an inch thick. Why? Because they freeze perfectly. And if they're too thin, they're not gonna defrost well, no matter how good you do it. So if you buy thin slices of fresh fish, use them that day or at the most the next. But try to freeze the thick ones and you can freeze them seasoned like we're gonna do. So we're gonna talk about flavor. Flavor is the single most important part of my topics because foods that are delicious are foods you're gonna eat again and again. And if they're not good, it doesn't matter how healthy they are, you might eat them once or twice and that's it. So instead of your food being a meal plan or an eating habit, they become a diet. And that's when things start going wrong because we want things that are tasty and delicious and we can repeat and we're happy to come and buy and eat. And we want to make them fast and simple. So here are the hacks seasoning. I'm going to show you what I do, but one thing that I use right now are these amazing things that I've been buying just to make a difference. You're going to see in my freezer that I have a lot of zipper bags. And even though I reuse them, I've been changing into these containers that are silicone and they are tiny ice cube trays. These ice cubes I use for garlic, turmeric, and spices that are I use just a little bit. For pesto, for example, I use this one. And that one, it's a little bigger. These ones have a cover. You can use your regular ice cube trays to add sliced shallots, sliced cilantro, and for herbs and seasonings, you also use the small ones. I'm gonna show you in a little while in the fridge and come, let's see how they look. I have an amazing freezer because I won't lose any of my cold when I open the door. I just open the part I need. So you see, these ones are the garlic. So I have the tiny cubes of garlic in the bag. And here you're going to see I have all sorts of amazing spices. I have turmeric, ginger, oregano. I have many many I have sun-dried tomatoes I have all sorts of frozen and delicious seasonings that I use because it's only my husband and I and we love to eat so at night when I come I just break a piece from the bag cook and go I don't have to get myself all dirty and here let me show you I have some of them frozen in big bags for example these are bell peppers I have some cilantro that I freeze with nothing in it. I have green onions. I have shishito peppers. And I have many, many other ingredients. Leeks, I have leeks, I had forgotten the word. I have green bell peppers. I have some turmeric little cubes here too. So I have these here also frozen for my soups. I keep, for example, my oils, my good oils, far away from the heat, like the truffle oil in the fridge. Well, we're running out of vegetables, <laughs> but the rest that I use are gonna be here. The ones that I use fresh. They're gonna be sitting here, waiting for me to use them during the week. Now there's something else that I wanted to show you here in the freezer, and it is that I season many of my foods. And let's see where they are today. If you can see, I keep them in containers like these. So I have seasoned poultry, and I have seasoned fish, and I have all sorts of seasoned meals for two that I keep in my containers frozen. 
else than the pantry. I usually keep a, a list of foods in my pantry that are super simple and they are yogurt. I keep, well, we'd say the pantry even though they're refrigerated. I keep Greek yogurt, plain yogurt. I keep my spices, herbs, all refrigerated. And then I keep oils, mustards, and different kinds of vinegars. You're gonna get a list of the pantry foods that I keep and they are basic. I have like three kinds of vinegar. Usually I'll have a rice, a balsamic, and then I'll have some apple cider vinegar and maybe some varieties of different ones that I find. With oils, I have pistachio oil, macadamia oil, some nut oils. I have some great olive oils. And then I have some specialty oils here and there that I find. And I add to my foods to make different and special meals. Now we showed you the freezer and I'm gonna show you the video of how I process them and cut each one differently because some you can grind and almost process completely, but others like onions and peppers, you just chop and place them. But you're gonna get the link to a 10 minute video. Uh, it's a master video on everything you can freeze to create amazing meals. Now hacking salt. The best thing to do to lower your consumption of salt is to prepare your own food without sauces from a bottle. Because sauces from a bottle, like you're gonna see in another link that I'm gonna send you, have tons of hidden salt and tons of hidden sugar too. So if you prepare your foods with healthy ingredients, you won't have to be measuring every little bit of salt, even though you might want to, because you want to know how much hydration or rehydration you're taking within yourself, but you won't have to be that careful. Plus, we are gonna add so many amazing flavors that you're not gonna need that much salt. Fat, when hacking fat, there are three tricks that are my most special tricks. The first one is this one. I always have my coconut oil that I use in one of these and this has a tiny tiny spout meaning that i'm going to be able to spread it around everywhere using less the second one is cooking with steam and i use my panini grill or my pan with a little bit of oil i've used like a 10 inch skillet with a quarter teaspoon of oil i just put some of my vegetables there and when they're starting to heat I add some water, cover them, and the steam is gonna help us cook so much faster and with a lot less oil. Now, we are gonna talk a little bit about those things that we don't want to cook, but we wanna have in the kitchen or at home, if you have a tiny kitchen, even at the office, that are amazing. And these are dressings, sauces, and spreads. Instead of using mayonnaise for everything, we're gonna have an array of delicious sauces. Some made with Greek yogurt, other made with plain yogurt, some made with coconut yogurt, and you can uh, change one for the other, and other made with fruit, as fruit bases. You're gonna love them. There's some amazing blackberry sauces. There's even a blackberry coffee sauce that you're gonna like. There is a basic dressing that I use that is basically 16 ounces of plain yogurt with a little bit of salt, pepper, honey, and rice vinegar, olive oil. And that's a base for many other recipes and that are gonna be used as sauce or as dressing, or even to put, for example, pour up over potatoes, over many ingredients like eggplant, sweet potatoes, delicious. You're gonna have all these videos right now that you can watch. Also, for example, we're gonna make a sauce with Greek yogurt and soy milk or almond milk for our turkey. So you can make a beautiful brown sauce with no oil, or you can add some butter if you want afterwards and with no flour. So now that we've talked about all of these things, there's one last thing and that is storing how do we store our foods it is very very important that we store our foods in tightly sealed containers 
the refrigerator if we haven't refrigerated or the freezer if we haven't frozen. That way our foods are gonna keep great in perfect condition. And when we take them out to use them, then they're gonna be just like the first day you bought them. One thing is that they're sealed. Another thing is that they are in containers that are not very thick because the thicker or the taller the container, that means they're gonna take so much longer to defrost that they might not defrost as well because the heat is gonna defrost the ends and the inside might still have some ice cubes, some ice crystals inside. So the ideal is to have flat containers. Let me see if I have, I have those containers that I showed you and then I place my frozen foods because I just open them and take the food out in one of these bags. I seal it, put it under water, and then five or 10 minutes later, my food's defrosted and that's it. So these are little hacks and tricks that you can start using and you don't have to have lots of stuff because with one of these, I defrost all my foods because my containers fit here. If your container is bigger, you can find a bigger one. Same thing with the little ice cube things. I take out my ice cube, my different garlic or ginger, whatever I have in the little ice cube trays, put them in little bags, and then I reuse the bags. So it's not like the bag is used once and that's it. That's one of the second things is defrosting. The, the, the way you defrost your foods makes a huge difference on the quality of the food you're gonna eat. So I'm also gonna give you one of these handouts that you're gonna be able to print on how to defrost your foods in the refrigerator, underwater, or also something that you can do is in a cooler. For example, it's gonna be the holidays and you wanna defrost the turkey and you don't have space in your fridge. All you have to do is take a big cooler, fill it with cool water and leave it there and it'll defrost perfectly. So there are lots of things that you can defrost in a cooler too. Now, last but not least, when you cook the food, you're also gonna get a lot of videos of cooking your food, but the food you cook for today, you cook exactly as you want to eat it. The food you cook for tomorrow, you're gonna cook it a little less. Why? Because you want it to not dry out. You want to reheat it the next day and you want it to be exactly like the first day. So I'm gonna give you the tips for each one of the foods in uh, some other of these papers, which I'm sure you can't see them right now from here, but I have them, it's called reheat and reuse. So you have the guides on how to reheat and reuse chicken, pork, almost all of the proteins and legumes too. So I really hope you like this. I'm sorry I can't be there this time and hope to see you sometime soon and that you enjoy all of these amazing videos. Thank you. There is one thing that is very pleasant and that is to sit in a table that is beautifully placed and it can be this colorful or it can be all white. But the most important thing is that it's a simple place where you can sit, eat, and have a nice meal without having a lot of noise that is external. And we've got no distraction. It's just food, conversation, and us. Thank you.